Hi guys, this is Weasel for PokerBrainiacs.com and we are going to be discussing the concept of pot odds. Perhaps it's something you are already familiar with and if not, hopefully you will know how to calculate them and how to use them by the end of this video. Why do we need to use pot odds? They are used to help us establish whether we can make a profitable call in various situations and the pot odds themselves actually describe the ratio of hero's call to the size of the pot and as we will go on to see they can also be expressed as a fraction as well as a ratio and it really just depends on your preference which of the two methods you use and we will look briefly at both the term pot odds is not to be confused with just odds and odds is an estimation of your hand equity or hand strength so there are two similar terms there pot odds and odds I sometimes prefer to refer to odds as hand equity just because there is less, less risk of confusion and it's by comparing our pot odds to our odds that we are able to decide whether we have a profitable call Let's start with calculating our hand equity or our odds. The first thing to understand is that this is an estimate of our equity and it depends on which outs we think are live. And obviously we won't necessarily know which outs we think are live unless we have a reasonable idea of what kind of range we expect Berlin to have. The most common way of calculating our equity given the number of outs we have is by using either the two times rule or the four times rule and which of the two you use depends on the current street you are on. If you are on the flop with two streets to come you typically use the four times rule and you multiply the number of outs you think you have by four. If you are on the turn with one street to come you multiply the number of outs you have by two. Let's look at an example. Let's imagine we have the ace of clubs, the ten of clubs on the king eight deuce board with two clubs. The exact pre-flop action is not that important. All we really need to know is that by this point in the hand, hopefully we have a reasonable idea of how villain's range looks. Let's say that we think it's likely villain has a king and that we think that our ace outs are good and our flush draw outs are good. We have nine flush draw outs, we have three outs to hit our overpair, which gives us 12 outs in total. We are on the flop and therefore we want to use the four times rule, seeing as we have two cards left to come. 12 times four, will give us the estimate that we have around 48% equity. One thing that you might find useful is to memorize the different types of draws and how many outs they have. For example, a flush draw has 9 outs, an open-ended straight draw has 8 outs, a gut shot has 4 outs, overcards have 3 outs each, so if you have 2 overcards you have 6 outs, Small pairs have five outs to hit two pair or trips. One thing you definitely need to do is to discount any outs that aren't live or may not be live. For example, in this above example, we are assuming just because villain has a king that therefore our ace out is good. If villain has a hand like ace king, all of our ace outs are dead. If we knew our ace outs were dead, we would obviously only want to times by 9 outs, so 9 times 4 gives us 36%. Or what we can do is we can partially discount outs, so we can say we think that our ace out is good a lot of the time, but some of the time we know villain is going to have that ace blocked, or he's going to have that ace beaten anyway, with maybe two pair or a set. We could therefore choose to only count, say, two of the three outs, or maybe one of the three outs. Your estimate is always only going to be as good as your understanding 
of villain's range. For example, in this particular example, some of the time perhaps your 10 out might be good, or perhaps your ace high might be good some of the time. So in order to make the most accurate estimate of your equity or your odds as possible, you need to have the best understanding of villain's range as possible. Also, don't make the mistake of using the four times rule if you probably won't see two more cards. Normally, if you are on the flop, you will be using the four times rule. But if, for example, you think villain is the type that will fire a big barrel on the turn very often, and you know that you are not going to have direct pot odds to call on the turn, it's going to make a lot more sense to use the two times rule because there is only one more card coming. And in the same way that you can partially discount outs, you can also partially discount the number that you times by. For example, if you know exactly that villain is going to barrel you off on the turn 50% of the time, but 50% of the time you are going to see a river card, you could then perhaps times your number of outs by 3 because this number is halfway be between 2 and 4. So this number you multiply by can be discounted in the same way. And as already discussed, now we have a rough idea of our hand equity or our odds. We need to compare this to our pot odds to establish if we can make a profitable call. One final thing to note about the two times and four times rule is when you use that rule with a large amount of outs, for example, various types of monster draws, especially when you start to get above 12 outs and maybe you have 16 outs or something, the rule begins to lose its accuracy slightly. It still serves as a reasonable estimate of your equity, especially since your equity is going to be an estimate anyway. But you should just be aware that with a large amount of outs, you may be off by a few percent when estimating your equity with the two times and four times rule. How do we calculate our pot odds? Firstly, we need to express hero's call as either a ratio or a fraction. The standard method that you will see used on the forums and in maybe strategy books is to express this term as a ratio. I prefer to express these terms as fractions just because I'm more comfortable using fractions. I also think it makes more sense to use fractions because it seems that they are more closely related to percentages in terms of it's a lot easier to visualize the amount of equity you need to make a call with a fraction than it is a ratio, at least I find that anyway. And I do think the only reason ratios are really used still is because they have a history in the gambling industry of being used to express the odds you are getting. Let's look at an example and we are going to use both the ratio and the fraction method. The pot size is 100 and villain bets 50. With the ratio method we calculate firstly that the total pot is 150, that's the pot size plus villain's bet. Hero needs to call 50 to continue in the pot. So we express these two numbers, 150 and 50, as a ratio. So we put this as 150 to 50, or 3 to 1 in its most simplified form. People will use the expression that you are getting 3 to 1 on a call in this situation. The fraction method. The difference between the fraction method and the ratio method is that you need to include hero's potential call in the total pot. So in this case the total pot is going to be 200 because villain bets 50, the pot size is 100 so that's 150 plus hero's call another 50 which gives us a total pot of 200. Hero's call is 50 and we therefore take these two numbers 200 and 50 and we express them as a fraction 
50 over 200 or 1 over 4 in its most simplified form. And just looking at these two numbers, 3 to 1 the ratio and 1 over 4 the fraction, I just find in my mind that it's a lot easier to see that 1 in 4 equates to 25% than it is to see that a 3 to 1 ratio equates to 25% in this particular situation. I think a lot of people may know automatically that 3 to 1 is equivalent to 25% in terms of calculating equity needed. But when you start to get into using more complex ratios, it can be a little bit more difficult. And you may find that you actually have to convert this ratio into a fraction before you can establish a percentage anyway. We want to convert our fraction ratio into a percentage and then compare it to our hand equity. So as said, we've got either a ratio or a fraction and we need to know which percentage this is equivalent to. 1 over 4 is equivalent to 25% and 3 to 1 is equivalent to 25%. Therefore, in this particular case, we would need to have 25% equity in order to continue in the hand by virtue of our pot odds. And in terms of converting a ratio to a percentage, as said, you may at first need to convert that ratio to a fraction before you are able to transform it into a percentage. If you don't need to do that, then fine. But it's useful to know how to convert ratios to fractions. And the way you do it is you add both sides of the ratio to give you a denominator and denominator is just a fancy word for the bottom half of a fraction and you retain the numerator which is the mathematical term for the top half of a fraction. In other words we keep this one but we make the other side 3 plus 1 in the case of 3 to 1 and we end up with 1 over 4. So you add the two numbers together to give you the denominator of the fraction and you retain the other number and use that as the numerator and from there you can hopefully convert to a percentage if you still can't convert to a percentage by looking at the fraction the way you do it is you divide the top part of the fraction by the bottom half of the fraction which will give you a decimal for example 1 divided by 4 is going to be something is going to be 0 0.25 and you then times that by 100 to give you the percentage. And here's the example written out. 3 to 1 ratio, 3 plus 1 equals 4, and our fraction is going to be 1 over 4. In actual fact, this addition step, this 3 plus 1, is what we are doing when we use the fractional method. We are just doing that part of the method first. For example, we are adding hero's call to the total pot size is the equivalent to adding the two sides of the ratio and I pretty much just find it easier to do that step immediately and then deal with fractions from that point onwards. Therefore essentially the ratio and the fraction method are identical you just may find it easier to think in terms of fractions. If you're more comfortable with the ratio method then by all means use the ratio method. It is the most common method and the one you will see used on forums etc. Okay so as a summary we want to calculate our odds or hand equity using the two times and four times rule depending on villain's range. We then want to calculate our pot odds either using the fraction method or the ratio method and convert this to a percentage and then compare that percentage to our equity to decide if we have a profitable call. And just a quick point to help you establish what exactly the relevance of pot odds is. 
if we were to have a hand equity being larger than the pot odds, we have a profitable call. But if the two percentages are identical, for example, you need 25% and the pot is giving you 3 to 1 odds, which is equivalent to 25%, the play is actually going to be break even. And theoretically, you could call or you could fold. It doesn't actually make a difference in the long run. The only difference it really would make is that calling is going to perhaps be higher variance because you either lose more or you win more a higher percentage of the time. In practice, if people are getting exactly the odds to call, they pretty much always call. I've never seen anyone fold in this situation, but it's interesting to understand that theoretically you could call or fold. The final thing is that pot odds are not the only factor in whether a call is going to be profitable. In order to fully understand if a call is profitable, we need to take into account any chips that can go into the pot on a later street and we can then make a revised estimate of our pot odds taking this into account and taking into account money that will go into the pot on a later street is termed your implied odds and there is going to be a video on implied odds which is recommended that perhaps you watch after this one I hope this has given you a slightly better understanding of how pot odds work and how to calculate them. This has been Weasel for PokerBrainiacs.com.